Ah, the holidays are here. And while that may mean cold weather, it also means warm hearts and candy. Lots and lots of candy. And then there's the candy cane. Did you know that as treats go, the candy cane is actually pretty virtuous? Yep, the average candy cane has only 50 calories, no fat, no cholesterol. Now, its association with Christmas, its stripes, and its peppermint flavor, those actually are pretty recent. So how do we get that crafty crook anyway? That is what we are going to check out. Ted here. Sugar actually only made it to Europe around 1100 AD, and that was a product of the Crusades, actually. It was an expensive luxury item, with one pound of sugar back then costing the equivalent of between 50 to 100 of today's dollars. Now, when Columbus went on his second voyage to the New World, he brought with him sugarcane to plant in the Caribbean. Within 60 years, there were 3,000 sugar mills in the Caribbean and in Central America. So, by the 1600s, sugar candies were becoming the rage in Europe. In 1670, at the Cologne Cathedral in Germany, the choir master had a problem. You see, the choir boys tended to get restless during the worship service and misbehave, causing a distraction for the worshipers. His solution? Bribery. The logic makes sense. Give them a hard candy, something to suck on. They'll keep their mouths shut. They'll be quiet. Now, as effective as it was, giving misbehaving children candy was frowned upon. So, to get around the complaints, he took a simple white pulled sugar stick and bent it into a hook shape. That way, he could claim that he was using the candies not as a bribe, but as a lesson about Christ, the Good Shepherd, as the candy now looked like a shepherd's crook. Still, the canes were not mint flavored, not striped, nor were they even associated yet with Christmas. But candy canes weren't associated with Christmas until 1847, and that was in Worcester, Ohio, when a German immigrant by the name of August Imgard decorated his Christmas tree with white paper ornaments and candy canes. Now, the candy canes didn't have stripes, they were just pure white candy canes, but that was the first association of candy canes with Christmas. Now here's a fun Atlanta connection. It was in the 1920s when Atlanta native Bob McCormick started making striped candy canes flavored with peppermint. Bob's company originally employed a host of workers whose job it was to bend the near molten candies into the familiar crook shape. Bob's brother-in-law helped design a machine that would bend the canes automatically enabling Bob's Candies to become the first true mass producer of candy canes and the first company ever to ship them worldwide. You see, though Bob didn't understand how to use an apostrophe as you can tell by the logo, Bob's Candy Canes were also the first candies ever wrapped in the cheap but sterile cellophane, making sanitary shipping of the tasty treat even easier. I hope that this has been fun and informative. For more fun videos, recipes, and travel tips, check out our website at historybytheplate.com. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. It is fun and free. Happy cooking!